we had made an introductory video for 3D Gaussian planting and I realized that there aren't a lot of resources showcasing how you can set 3D Gaussian planting code on Linux. There is uh, some resources for Windows. However, there's nothing for Linux and one of our subscribers also asked us if we could create instructions on how to get it up and running for Linux. So this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up 3D Gaussian splatting on Linux and how you can train your first 3D Gaussian model. On top of that, we'll also show you the results from this training session. Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Dhruv. At Convolve AI, we assist enterprises with their computer vision and AI related tasks and problems. If you have any questions, if you want to chat, here is our contact information. You can feel free to contact us. Let's get started with how we can set up 3DGS and train models on Linux. Stay tuned until the end. All right, guys. So here is uh, our first step. Here is how we can do the setup. So if you look at uh, this uh, uh, repository, uh, the first step here is to clone the uh, 3DGS repository, which has all the code. So let me show you what this repository looks like. Um, this is uh, the 3DGS repository over here. Um, it has all the code over here. And the most important thing is it has two sub modules. There is a differential Gaussian rasterizer. This is a rasterizer that is based on CUDA code. So it is an accelerated uh, um, code for rasterizing. Uh, this is very important. Um, and then they have another simple KNN. And this is used to um, determine the nearest uh, Gaussians and all of that fun stuff. Um, so these are two uh, basically uh, sub modules within this repository. Um, so it's important when you clone this repository, you have to use dash dash recursive at the end in order to make sure that the entire repository is cloned. Once you have cloned the repository, the next step is to uh, create a Conda environment. So for those of you who are not aware, uh, Conda is basically uh, a package manager or virtual environment manager for Python. Uh, you can use it to uh, download and install packages, create virtual environments and a lot of good stuff. So if you don't have Conda installed, uh, you can Google that. There is a install script for Linux and using that you can um, install Conda on your Linux environment. Now, uh, this is how you can create a Conda environment, Conda create dash and Gaussian splatting uh, with a desired Python version. And then uh, basically, once you've created, you activate that Conda environment. So as an example, let me show you uh, the terminal here. Um, so this is what the terminal looks like. Uh, so guys, uh, also, I want to make uh, it very clear. Um, running i i'm running this uh, demo on ubuntu however it's as a part of windows so inside of windows there is something called wsl windows subsystem for linux so essentially inside of windows i've installed wsl with ubuntu 2204 and with that ubuntu 2204 i have uh, created a linux environment so this is completely a linux uh, environment it has everything uh, like you see in Linux, uh, it's exactly Linux running inside of Windows. Um, so everything that happens here is in Linux. So um, that's how uh, this code was built, run on Linux. And uh, that's why I'm delivering this tutorial for Linux over here. So um, here is an example. When you activate a Conda environment, you will see that activated Conda environment over here. So if I want to deactivate it, I can just do Conda deactivate and it will deactivate it. And then if I do Conda activate Gaussian splatting, it will activate that environment. And all the packages that I installed within the Gaussian splatting environment stay in there. So it's kind of self-contained virtual environment and it makes your development work a lot easier with uh, very less uh, version errors, uh, package management issues, and so on. Now that um, we have uh, already installed our um, 
we've done the setup and we have already uh, activated the Conda environment. The next step is to install Torch. Now, the first thing you need to make sure is check your CUDA toolkit. Um, so you need to ensure that you you know the version of your CUDA toolkit. Uh, the way you can do this, it is using this command ll slash user slash local CUDA. Mostly your CUDA toolkit uh, will be stored in this path. If it's not, you'll have to search uh, for where it is and see the version. But in most cases, if you have installed, uh, it should be over here. If you don't have a CUDA toolkit installed, let's see how you can install it. Um, so let's go here. Um, so this is, if you Google CUDA toolkit, uh, say I'm here, I'm doing 12.1 uh, because, and the reason is because the current Torch version is compatible with 12.1, the latest one. That's why I installed 12.1. Uh, and if you Google that, you will find the uh, NVIDIA's official uh, uh, web page with the CUDA toolkit. Now, uh, because we are using Linux, x86, um, Ubuntu 2204, I want to do the run file. All you need to do is run this command in your terminal. Followed by this command, you just run this uh, command to install the run file. So after you run these two commands, if uh, you did not have a CUDA installed, CUDA toolkit installed, it would be installed in your system. Now that say you have installed CUDA 12.1, the next step is to install Torch. So Torch is uh, the deep learning framework that is most widely used and that's what this code uses. So let me show you how you can install Torch. So all you need to do is go to pytorch.org. On the first page, you select a stable build for Linux using pip. Uh, Python and CUDA version is 12.1. Uh, see, that's the most latest. That's why I installed CUDA 12.1. And all I need to run is pip3 install torch, torch vision, torch audio. Once you run this, the entire torch library will be installed in your system. Now, guys, once you have this, there are two other dependencies, ply file and tqdm. You can just install the, this with the pip install ply file, pip install tqdm, and voila, your uh, environment is ready at this point. Uh, now, guys, you will see that uh, within the Gaussian splatting repository, there is an environment file, and the code tells us to follow this environment file. But from my personal experience and from other issues reported on this GitHub uh, repository, this particular environment file is not working out very well for Linux. So um, what I uh, experienced, I had to do it step by step the way I showed you. And also other folks also recommended the same thing. So they said that, you know, the first step is just uh, create your environment, install CUDA uh, toolkit, uh, install a compatible torch version and install these packages. And you should be ready to go because otherwise, um, there were installation errors um, using their environment file and hence we did not use that. Uh, so once you have step one to four done, the next step is just to uh, basically install the sub modules. So there are two sub modules as we uh, talked before. There is Gaussian rasterizer, differential Gaussian rasterizer and simple KNN. So you can very simply install it with pip install uh, for both of them. Now, it's possible that um, this may fail. And if it fails, that means there is some compatibility issues. I face those compatibility issues when setting this up on Linux. Um, but when I followed these steps exactly uh, with the correct versions, as I showed you with CUDA 12.1 and then Torch installed for CUDA 12.1, um, I did not face any issues going forth. So um, as long as you make sure that um, uh, you follow these instructions, uh, you should be good to go. Now guys, once the setup is done, uh, what is the next step? The next step is um, now you, you have the system trained. Uh, uh, I mean, you have the system set. 
you have every dependency met so you have uh, the system installed now let's see how we can train a model how we can run this so the first thing to uh, run this is to get a data set right so uh, the uh, authors have released a set of data set um, so essentially the way Gaussian splatting works and if you guys don't know uh, watch the other video that I created on Gaussian splatting you need to know the images and you need to know their respective poses um, and uh, the most important thing is um, the poses are usually generated using cold map so uh, the authors in the repository they have already released a data set where they have processed that data set with cold map to get the poses so you can very simply download them uh, let me show you on the repository if you go here under the section of uh, running you will see uh, over here they have um, created uh, SFM which is structure for motion uh, data set for tanks and temples and deep blending here so just clicking on this link you can download that data set um, let me show you what it looks like um, so this is this is what that data set looks like um, th there are multiple different scenes in here but uh, the ones I used was this train so there is sparse folder which contains the information about uh, the uh, the camera parameters uh, the poses of the camera everything is contained here and this is the output from cold map and then we have images um, these are the images uh, so this is what the scene looks like on which we are training so um, once uh, you have this data set uh, then you are all set to start the training process um, the training process is very simple python train dash s uh, in the gaussian splatting folder uh, you just run this command uh, path through the data set for example you can see it here the training by default runs for 30,000 iterations uh, once uh, this is complete um, throughout the uh, uh, training process uh, it will keep saving uh, models based on your specified um, checkpoint uh, interval but uh, uh, by the end of it it will save at 30,000 the final model um, and this is what the output looks like so for example uh, in your folder it will create an output folder within that output folder there will be a file so let me show you the sample folder here um, Gaussian splatting here you'll see the output and here is uh, the output this point cloud is the model so it's the ply file this ply file contains information about the gaussians uh, all their parameters scale rotation their uh, their xyz uh, values that means the translation uh, spherical harmonics all the information is encoded in this file it's all in here that's your model uh, that you have trained so once you have that now the next step is to render um, and rendering is pretty straightforward um, it's this command over here you run this command uh, python render dash m you give it the path to the model so over here we give the path to the model that we just trained and it will do the rendering for you now guys once it's all rendered it will save the model over here um, save the model output over here pardon me inside the output in the, your model it will create these folders test and train within train it will showcase the rendering on the train set and within the test it will showcase the rendering on the test set so that said now uh, let's see what it looks like so here you can see two rendering side by side and let's see if you can tell which one is actually a rendering and which one is uh, the ground truth images um, so here is one of this is the output of the model and one of it is the ground truth I just encoded it into a video so yeah uh, if you have given it a thought let's go and see um, so left one is rendering uh, right one is ground truth and you can see it uh, clear like you see the far off regions you can see a little bit of uh, 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 some artifacts some floaters over there but overall if you look at the quality of this rendering it's pretty nice right um, this is a model that is rendering these images 
and also uh, it's rendering at a fast speed and it also trained at a fast speed better than nerves um, and you can see the result so that's it guys following these instructions you should be able to set up uh, the gaussian splatting project on your linux machine um, pretty straightforward it's not too complicated as long as you meet all the required dependencies um, and there you go you have a working version of a 3d gaussian model uh, that you can train and that you can use for your renderings if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you are notified about any new video that we upload. If you have any questions, if you want any discussion, you can definitely mention your comment, uh, questions in the comment below or you can feel free to reach us. Again, our contact information is right here. Um, thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.